Order. Question number 12, Dr. Kennedy Graham. Order. Order. I've called the Dr. Kennedy Graham. Question number 12. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My question is to the Minister for Climate Change Issues. Will he explain? Will he explain, given the latest projection of New Zealand's net greenhouse gas emissions is around 90 million tonnes in 2040, how the government can conceivably reach its own emissions reduction target of 30 million tonnes by 2050? Mr Speaker, Honourable Simon, on behalf of the Minister, we will meet our targets through a combination of the New Zealand ETS and other domestic initiatives. We will also likely use reductions from overseas where it makes good economic sense to do so. The ETS is a long-term tool and it is not hard to imagine that with a good outcome on a new global agreement and leadership from the major economies, we will need to adjust our own domestic policy response as well. We anticipate that the Ministry's projections will continue to change over the next 30 or 40 years. Supplementary, Supplementary question, Dr Kennedy Graham. But does he take responsibility for the fact that the latest projections show that instead of meeting a 50 per cent reduction in emissions, we are heading for a 50 per cent increase. Speaker. Honourable Simon Bridges. Well, on behalf of the Minister, no, because, of course, the projections are useful, but they're also limited, given that they're based on, uh, at the moment, a very low carbon price. And we know that as we make progress in international negotiations, that carbon price will surely rise. Supplementary. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr Kennedy Graham. Well, can he then explain to this House why New Zealand's net emissions have increased since 2009, the period his government has been weakening the ETS with the result of a low carbon price? Honourable Speaker. Simon Bridges. Well, on behalf of the Minister, as I've just said, and it's implicit in my last uh, answer. It's a product at the moment of a low carbon price right around the world. But what, of course, is very true is that as we make progress internationally, it's highly likely the price will rise. And with that, the projections and the progress that we will make around this world. Supplementary. Supplementary question, the right honourable Prime Minister. Order. So, what is the likely impact of a much higher uh, carbon price and a much more... A fulsome ETS going to be on residential consumers when they pay their electricity bill if one was to be promoted. Mr. Speaker. Honourable Simon Bridges. On behalf of uh, the Minister, well, of course, prices will rise exponentially and uh, it will be a terrible thing for consumers all around New Zealand. Let us hope that Labour and Greens order, never make order, it into government order, the again. Last, the last part of that question is out of order. Supplementary. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr Kennedy Graham. Can he find any other reason for this monumental policy failure on the part of this government and its breach of our framework convention obligations other than the gutting of the ETS over which he has presided? Speaker. Honourable Simon Bridges. On behalf of the Minister, well, of course, the, me the member is simply wrong. We have not gutted uh, the ETS. The ETS is effectively one of the very best in the world. What is true is the carbon price all around the world is low. That's not going to stay the position. I'm actually very optimistic about global negotiations over coming, year coming years and that we can make an a real difference uh, on this serious issue. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr Kennedy Graham. Well, when he optimistically assures the New Zealand public that his 2012 amendments on climate change will ensure New Zealand continues to do its fair share, does he believe the world will agree once it sees this graph? Thank you. Mr Speaker. Honourable Simon on behalf, Bridges. Of the half of the Minister... I don't know why he's showing a graph of what power prices will do under Labor Greens when they next are in power. But no, I disagree with the member. We move now to questions for members. The first one in the name of Dr Rajin Prasad. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to...